Caroline and Her Friends by Pierre Probst A Camping Holiday Blue Lake Camp, welcome to all. Carrying its load of happy campers, the bus wound its way to Blue Lake Camp. Over the hills and valleys, across rivers and through forests, until at last it came to Blue Lake. Hello, 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 said Miss Stringfellow, the camp leader. Welcome to you all. Bright and early the next morning, Caroline called for her friends at their big canvas tent. It's time for breakfast, she said, but not a bite until you've all washed your faces. After breakfast, they all marched over to the doctor's office for an examination. I have to make sure you're all healthy, he said, before you take part in camp activities. And since they had taken their cod liver oil regularly, they passed with flying colours. Even Bobby, their new tent mate, who had a very, very slight case of the sniffles, After a long morning of rounders and tennis, they cooled off in the clear waters of Blue Lake. There they go, slide, splash, right off the top of the big rock. Caroline took some wonderful photographs of the scene. Oh good, spaghetti for lunch. Some of Caroline's friends had never seen spaghetti before, but each one of them found his own way to eat it. Every camp has rest time after lunch, but all was not quiet in tent number three at Blue Lake. What am I going to do with you, scolded Caroline. You never stop teasing and playing for a minute. If you promise to keep very quiet and really rest, I'll take you for a hike in the woods. The forest was full of strange and wonderful sights. The tall trees reached up to the sky and the ground covered with soft green moss and speckled with brightly colored flowers. Kit crawled along the ground, examining a beetle. Well, well, he thought, I've never seen one quite like this. Then Boom, who had lived in a forest all of his life, led them back down the path to the camp. Help, help, save us! Loud shouts from tent number three woke the whole camp. In the middle of the night, on went Caroline's torch. A tiny mouse blinked up at it. You big silly, said Caroline. Fancy being afraid of a little mouse. And now, said the mouse, if you don't mind, I'd like to get some sleep. Dear Mum, I'm having a wonderful time. Thank you for the biscuits. Puff ate so many that his sweet tooth started to ache. And kids' feet hurt from walking. Blacks and Dandy are playing ping pong now. But they're not very good. Please send more biscuits, love and kisses, Chippy. How small the blue lake looked, how far away down the valley. The path was steep, but the mules knew it well and clambered up slowly, placing their hooves carefully on the stones. As far as the eye could see, mountain peaks were ranged one after another. Caroline thought she could even see snow on some of them. They spent the next afternoon in the mountains, exploring the ruins of what had once been a very beautiful castle, searching for the underground tunnels and secret rooms kept everyone busy for hours. Indeed, when Caroline said that it was time to go, nobody wanted to leave. 
Flacco wanted to stay and practice tightrope walking on the high arch forever and ever. When the campers returned to their tent, they were still full of energy. So a pillow fight was started. Stop it! Stop it this instant, said Miss Stringfellow. If there is not absolute silence in one minute, this tent will not take part in tomorrow night's show. Instantly, all was quiet. Blue Lake Camp Program. Grand Fair with Raffle and Stage Performance. 8 p.m. sharp. The Tales of Pippin. Caroline and her group at the piano. Party games, community singing, and folk dancing. The next day was the end of the camp season, and the campers drove off in the big yellow bus. They were all anxious to see their families again, but sorry to say goodbye to each other. Little did they know, they would soon be setting off together on another exciting journey.